Hi, my name is Tracy McMullen, and today's YouTube video will talk about look smarter than you are with Hyperion Planning. What is Project Financial Planning, or PFP? Hyperion Project Financial Planning is a pre-built Hyperion Planning application that is designed to address the process disconnect that often happens between our project planning process and then tracking the actuals of the project. PFP will support all of the phases of the project lifecycle. So we're able to project projects based off long range financial models. We can then plan and set targets for the projects, going through the, the process of planning and proposing projects, reviewing them and, and deciding how we're going to fund those projects. And then finally, whether we're going to approve them or not, and then actually initiating the project. We can manage within PFP the financial performance of ongoing projects and then do iterative forecasts and what-if scenarios, deciding if we move this project to this month, what is the, the financial impact to that? Should we do this project or should we not do this project? PFP answers a lot of important questions like why do we need to undertake the project? What is the return on investment? How do these projects rank based on KPIs and which one should we undertake? How are my projects being managed to actuals and do I need to reforecast? If I say yes to this project, what is the financial impact? PFP provides a number of out of the box data forms, task lists, business rules and components to meet the needs when you're planning your projects. So you can plan for contract capital or indirect projects. You can do expense planning at a very granular level or at a summarized level. PFP includes workforce planning and CapEx planning modules. PFP allows you to do driver-based overhead calculations for your projects, and you can manage periodic or milestone-based revenue recognition for your projects. When you make changes in PFP to your forecasts on your projects, you can understand and calculate the financial impact to your income statement, your balance sheet, and your cash flow. You can score, rank, and approve projects within PFP, and then determine how you're going to fund it, actually perform the fund requests and the approval process within the PFP application. Now, if you don't wanna use all of that application, PFP is configurable in recent versions, and so you can turn on and off the functionality that you want to use. This diagram illustrates graphically what we just discussed in that PFP supports all of these steps, the full life cycle of managing your projects. So you can model your strategic initiatives and then propose and plan projects to meet and support those initiatives. You can then rank and fund your projects, actually approve them, and then you're ready to monitor and report. So loading in actuals from your project system or your ERP, and then based on the actuals that are coming in and how the project is going, End users can then update and reforecast the future project expenses. Within PFP, end users have the ability to propose new projects and approve them. So you can see here that there are pre-built task lists within the PFP application. End users simply follow the task list to plan out their projects. So they can go to propose new projects, right click, enter the new project details, and that's gonna execute a business rule where they can enter in all of the applicable information for that project. What's the project name, the description, the start date, the end date, who is the project manager, what's the location, the priority. If this is a project that's surrounding a capital asset, what's gonna be the end service date, and it actually ties in those capital asset pieces so that you can calculate out your depreciation, your future depreciation expense. Once projects have been created, end users have the ability to manage those existing projects so they can at any time update the information for a particular project if they need to change the project end date or shift a project forward or back, you can do that within PFP. You can perform your expense planning for your projects, your revenue planning if that's applicable. You can review the financial impact all from this kind of central window or central data form for end users. You're also able to load in your actuals for your project so you can not only review the forecast that you have for the project, but how it's comparing to actuals and then add in commentary uh, for any variance explanations. 
As I mentioned earlier, PFP includes the capital planning module. So not only can you tie in your assets to your projects and how you're going to be pulling in those expenses by project, you have the full functionality to manage and forecast your assets. So you can load in actuals for your existing assets um, and then manage them, transferring them, retiring the assets, and then calculating the appropriate expenses based on those, those changes. You can add in new assets and request new assets and then approve those. And again, because this is within PFP, you can tie that into projects. PFP also includes workforce planning. So like the capital piece of things, you can do the full workforce process within the PFP module. You can load in existing employees and then manage those employees. If you need to transfer them across departments or change their status, and then that will calculate the resulting employee expense based on the changes in the management that you're doing for those existing employees. You can add in new hires and essentially plan out your full compensation expense line item for your income statement. You can then tie in these, these employees and these resources by project so that if you need to track the labor expense by project, you have that ability within PFP. Now, under the covers, what happens with a PFP application? And this is for the more technical folks in the room. Three plan types will be created to support the PFP functionality. So you'll have a project plan type, you'll have a CapEx plan type, and a workforce plan type that will be built. You also have three other plan types that are kind of empty generic plan types that you could use for different requirements like revenue planning or if you wanted to create a summary type queue. Common dimensions between the applications or the standard or between the plan types or the standard dimensions, account, entity, scenario, year, period, and version. So PFP provides a number of different benefits for administrators and users and organizations. If you're trying to manage your projects and forecasting your projects and, and getting projects requests in using spreadsheets and manual processes, you will gain immediate relief by pulling all of this information into a central repository that's available over the web or in Excel where users can request projects and make changes and you can very quickly consolidate and see the financial impact of those, those proposed projects. You can accurately report and forecast the results of ongoing projects, so pulling in existing actuals and then updating forecasts based on those actuals. You have better abilities to track project-related revenue and expenses, and you get to leverage your existing investments that you have in your project management systems and ERP systems that are tracking all of the actuals details. So you then pull that into PFP and then can very easily update the forecasts that you have for those particular projects. Improved management of projects and project portfolios. So managing what initiatives we're doing, is it important to do these, and what should we be investing in? PFP provides visibility and transparency into all of that so that you can really make some good business decisions on what types of projects and efforts you're going to take on for your organization. Thank you for joining me with Look Smarter Than You Are, What is Project Financial Planning, or PFP?